<laughs> okay, let's go on. Our next speaker is Olivier uh, um, Courtin. Mm -hmm. And he's going to tell us about how deep learning can help us improve geospatial data quality. Welcome. Thanks. So um, that is the title of the presentation. And uh, the use case will be um, focused on geospatial data and uh, with um, mainly with OpenStreetMap data and use cases. Um, if we took uh, Belgium um, OpenStreetMap data, um, something like more than 10 years ago, um, it was only uh, the, the brown part, the, the black ones. And in, um, in the range, it was the official road uh, already mapped by NGI. Uh, if we look uh, a few years ago, um, a lot of roads have been mapped. And if we look something like one year ago, um, quite all the wool um, country area um, has been uh, um, mapped, um, but uh, it's only the case in uh, some, uh, some country. Uh, if you look on the worldwide, uh, there is still a lot of um, places uh, who are not mapped as well as uh, in uh, uh, the one who appeared in pink there. So all the, the blue uh, area are still um, in some inconsistency um, map area and one kind of uh, issue is to detect where because it's not uh, as easy as, as it for, for people who um, work on this kind of project uh, to be able to, um, uh, to fill um, the, the white area. Uh, obviously uh, it's not only um, thing related to, um, to feature we are not put on the map, it's also concerned about features that are not well mapped. For example, it's not the right attribute, uh, it's not uh, well placed, and it's not um, uh, on the field anymore, and so on. So there is obviously um, uh, quality insurance tools uh, helping this kind of project like OSM, uh, um, and one of, the, one of them um, is called Osmosis, uh, and uh, uh, if you look at it on, um, on Bruxelles, there is a lot of place we are still um, um, asking questions, in fact. There is, a, uh, there is a opening, uh, open questions uh, and uh, uh, people from the project are uh, welcome to, to look if uh, there is some, um, some, some feature we are still in um, consistency or, um, or not um, consistent on the, um, on the data set, but is only based on some um, geospatial um, uh, query. So for instance, uh, if there is a two roads who are not uh, connected together. So um, at this point, it's still based on some uh, spatial analysis as, um, as we could do in a classical way since decades. Um, to go further, one, uh, one way is to, um, to cross data set together uh, and one um, one example among them is to use, for, for instance, a light pollution map um, took um, nightly by, uh, satellite, um, uh, by satellite and to look uh, if there is a, a consistency, yes or no, between uh, the light pollution uh, map and the roads on the ground and, in fact, in the data set. So if we, if we look um, on correlation between uh, the, um, uh, the light density and the population, there is um, a first um, correlation. But if we took the road density and not only the population density, we, s we can see that we increase um, in, uh, in quite um, uh, quite different way uh, the correlation and the, um, the data set itself uh, improves itself um, and you can see that there is a slightly difference between the two. But at this point, we are still in the classical correlation uh, data set um, um, uh, test. Uh, if we want to go further, um, we um, have to go deeper and have a kind of analysis of pixel by pixel. And a few years ago, it was still something uh, not available um, on the, um, uh, out of the box. And right now, it's something like uh, can happen and you can uh, begin to play with uh, a system where a few years ago I was still uh, dedicated to, um, to research area. Uh, so a few months ago there was a um, kind of 
um, project uh, to say, okay, we have a deep learning framework, we have spatial imagery, what can we do out of the box with uh, this kind of um, with uh, this kind of system? Um, if we want to play out of the box <coughs> with deep learning vision system, um, we uh, can use fine tuning or transfer learning. Um, the, the two terms are. Um, uh, are closed uh, to uh, just grab an existing trained model and use it with our use case. Uh, if we do that with a trained model, it was a ResNet, um, and if we played with um, um, IRL imagery uh, and we provide the labelization um, related to what is on the ground, with several classes. So there is, for example, one classes for the building, one another for the vegetation, and so on. So there are a few classes. And the, um, the target is to let him um, predict, after, uh, after training, what there is on the, uh, what he see himself. And you can see that there is a, obviously a, a slightly difference between the two, but the prediction is not that bad. So. Uh, with an out-of-the-box solution, we are already um, able to, to do things that are quite efficient uh, for something um, not, not that bad. It's not accurate enough to, to be able to automatic mapping, but it's accurate enough to detect incons major inconsistency. Um, what is um, the first issue on, on here? This um, um, model, uh, this well-known model, I, are based on ImageNet. Um, uh, database uh, with uh, mainly based on uh, classical um, photography and these um, these photography are three band only uh, so uh, on our data set here uh, we already have four bands because there is one with uh, um, based on infrared uh, so they have uh, to to remove the blue one and to shift somewhere um, the um, the wavelength to the red uh, to be able to use the model because the model is only uh, dedicated to three band and three band only. But the point is that with uh, spatial imagery, um, we have no um, well, far more than three band, um, and uh, sometimes it will be uh, some kind of issue. Here you've got the the model um, code um, with the use, so we, um, they, they use ResNet. Um, with um, um, a convolution uh, layer. So the, here in this uh, two um, page, uh, there is only um, the, the code related to the model with used. Um, so if we want to go further than only out of the box solution, uh, there is, uh, um, um, there is uh, several contests on it. And uh, um, one, um, uh, one quite recent on, the, on this one, um, was um, uh, launched on Kegel, and the point was to um, be able to automatically detect some kind of feature um, from spatial imagery. Um, and on there, they provide a um, data set with several kinds of, of, um, um, of, um, uh, of data set with several um, kinds of, of bands. And uh, for example, um, here you've got three bands from RGB, the classical one, but here on multispectral, you get up to uh, 16 bands. So if we sum up all the whole band only from imagery, we can go to something like about 20. Uh, so it's far more than um, that the classical model are um, used to, uh, to, be, to be trained, to be, uh, to be engineered. And so um, this kind of, um, um, of result um, uh, imply to, um, to build a new kind of model able to, to deal with a several kind of band uh, The other issue is uh, related to the size of imagery. Uh, here, um, it's far more than the kind of um, uh, resolution you can find on ImageNet, so uh, you have to tile. And to, to split the data set in small, um, small area because the um, GPU uh, memory is not able to deal uh, at once with uh, this kind of um, uh, um, high resolution. Um, and what we see here, um, DeepSense AI um, wins the fourth place on this, concept, uh, this contest, and uh, we can see that the result is quite, quite good because of 
uh, the resolution and the number of band there was a, yeah it's, it was a high resolution and a quite rich a kind of data set provided um, at, um, as an input um, it's um, it's not um, um, it's, it's to mention that the, um, this contest was uh, provided by the, um, a defense laboratory and it's um, qu quite um, quite common in this uh, in this kind of field to uh, uh, to, um, to have the ability to, to get some high resolution data set uh, quite easily um, if we want to, to go further, so we have to, to deal with uh, some kind of um, um, model able to um, segmentize and desegmentize uh, the, um, uh, the, the input area. So by convolution, uh, we um, progressively um, go in abstract um, the information and then once we, um, we, um, we perform the, the convolution, we do the same in the reverse way to, to get the same kind of um, resolution as an output, but uh, here there is a lot of pixel value and here there is only the, the pixel related to the different places. So we get the same, uh, um, the same resolution uh, between the input and the output images, but with less places. Uh, the trick is to say, okay, but what, what happens if we add some some uh, extra uh, in, uh, some extra layer information not only the imagery uh, bounds uh, but for instance some uh, some bounds from uh, vectorial information so we rasterize uh, some um, uh, if we rasterize some uh, some layer in more uh, there is a paper who, um, on this kind of extra information and um, if we if, um, if they combine of it, uh, these two kinds of operation, um, they can improve again the quality of the prediction in output. Um, for instance, um, here um, there is the, the output prediction with only uh, the, the RGB uh, input, and here there is the output prediction uh, with both the RGB input and a training with um, the um, uh, the extra layer information and for some uh, buildings you can see that we uh, decrease some artifact but here it's already quite quite something but if we can't if you want to go more uh, the the, um, the concept is to add some extra layer in your in your tensor um, the um, the stuff is not related to, um, to fit and predict. The stuff is related to the way you, um, uh, you, um, you, um, you get your data, you transform it, and so on. So if we look at the whole, um, uh, the whole chain, there is a first, um, first step uh, related to uh, go from your data set, label it, uh, create your topology model, train it, and with your whole data set and your train model, you can um, grab a prediction. So if we focus on the first, um, first step, uh, what we need at this point uh, is uh, the ability to, uh, to label uh, easily your, your data set. There is um, one, um, uh, one tool which just has been released some, um, a few weeks ago um, related to the ability uh, to create automatic label from imagery uh, and to um, use an OSM uh, labeled on it uh, and uh, first a quick and dirty uh, model from um, using them is able to uh, to detect buildings on, a, on an area so it's brand new um, but if we want to go further and not using directly the label from OSM we have to um, we want to um, be able to modify them slightly or in a more uh, important way uh, and so what we do we use um, a classical GIS tools uh, as a PostgreSQL and PostGIS uh, and connect them to a mixnet for all the, um, uh, the deep learning stuff and the connection between the two is related to WKB raster uh, with uh, able indeed uh, to, uh, to convert between PostGIS raster and NumPy area um, uh, n-dimensional area so um, 
if we look to MXNet, MXNet is a, a deep learning framework um, uh, and uh, there is got the ability uh, to uh, let us uh, create our own uh, dedicated um, data loader uh, and so here there is a custom uh, data loader iterator prototype so in quite a few lines of Python you are able to, uh, to create your own data iterator. Uh, if we uh, create a special uh, a query able to create both uh, the, um, the split images and um, is labeled, uh, we are able to only um, on the user land um, uh, side uh, launch this, um, this styling by few lines uh, and here you've got your labeled and here you've got the imagery part. Uh, and uh, you can produce uh, on the fly as much um, tiles labeled as you want and indeed if there is something you want to change from for example uh, subselect something else or change the buffer uh, related to, to your road um, on the label it's quite easy to change it and to launch it again so you have really the way to configure quite uh, indeed as you want uh, the label that you want to, um, to try with your um, topology model. Once you, uh, you create both your label data set and uh, um, your model topology, you have to train it. And um, uh, MixNet is interesting because it is able uh, to deal with multi-GPU uh, and even if it's really needed um, with multi-machine <coughs> on the training state. Uh, and um, there is also something interesting is uh, its ability to uh, use um, your uh, a data set with uh, both data and label uh, in um, um, a binary encoding um, uh, record IO um, file and so uh, to be able to parse them in a really fast way. And uh, as the um, last part, so when you have to, to deal with prediction on the very large um, uh, coverage, um, the only question is uh, could we match reduce a map and the answer is in the question it's really easily to parallel um, to, par to parallelize um, the prediction because we only have to deal with um, uh, with the coverage um, and so the, the point is more on the infrastructure uh, and MXNet is, um, um, has been chosen by um, Amazon Web Services so it's really easy uh, to use the whole infrastructure to, uh, to do so. Um, if we look um, on, the, um, on, the, uh, on the circulation, um, the open data set uh, stuff uh, is uh, something we, we change everything. Um, at the first step, when nothing exists, uh, you have to do it all by yourself. When there is a, a training data set available, a uh, few, uh, um, few months or a few, um, a few months later, uh, you could um, uh, get a protein model available and then out of the box application. If we look on the uh, road dataset um, labeled uh, right now, the best one uh, is a SpaceNet uh, and uh, um, this dataset is only related to buildings and roads. That's something, um, but it's only on this uh, and it's also uh, dedicated on, on city, on big city. So there is, for, for example, Paris, there is Rio, and so on. Uh, but there, you don't have anything on countryside or on wild area. Uh, if uh, we look uh, on a few years, um, uh, on, the, uh, on the year before, um, the ImageNet uh, open data set um, seven years ago um, was a way to, to obtain right now um, a really high um, efficiency uh, with, um, with model uh, able to, to deal with. So uh, this kind of initiative is really, is really the key uh, to obtain a few months or a few years ago, um, a few years later, sorry, uh, something um, uh, efficient with, uh, with a model. Uh, what are the next steps? The next step uh, will be to, to deal with low resolution uh, imagery uh, there is, uh, uh, for instance, Planet and, or Sentinel-2 um, data set um, well, um, able to uh, provide a wide uh, world coverage, uh, something like um, each day or each week. 
so it's a way to uh, to map uh, every change on the ground um, worldwide and the other is to uh, to have a, um, a feedback a reinforcement learning with uh, um, with user if you want to, to go further on this ground there is uh, some references the best one is there and the best one is this one and if you want to play with uh, there is um, um, several space net challenge uh, the, the last one just closed uh, but we can uh, we can bet the, there will be a, a round four and there is um, a mapping challenge um, related to um, mapping um, uh, based on SpaceNet data uh, and it will be open in a quite few day or, or week uh, as it um, plan to, to end in something like April or May. Thanks. Before people start leaving, questions? Any questions for Olivier? Yes. So, I, I might have missed it in your talk. Um, how do you actually deal with the different resolutions from, from, so from the input images? You have different, the, the resolutions are, are very, very different. How, yep. how do you exactly deal with that? Um, we if you look, um, um, if you look there, um, we just uh, um, we just choose on the, the output resolution we want, and if it's different from the, the resolution we want, we rescale, and we can rescale with um, the kind of um, algorithm in the computer vision we want. Here it's bilinear, but it could be bicubic, uh, and so on. So, in fact, we rescale it. So, as input, do you have, say, for, for an image, you don't have RGB, you have those five bands and then... Yeah, uh, here... Because the... Next one. Yep, this there, one. Because, for example, the first, the grayscale one is huge, and the 16-band one is, is very, very tiny. Do you use it in yep. the same network as input? Yep. <laughs> so, um, the reason, um, the operation is called punch up, um, punch and if you look on the um, uh, data space, uh, on SpaceNet dataset, uh, they provide both uh, the, um, the raw dataset as, as an input, or you, they also provide the pan charting. Uh, so you have the, the choice to do it by yourself, or to use um, a classical um, imagery uh, operation to, um, uh, to to get the best from the bus. But indeed, it's a kind of a resampling. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker again.